Hallelujah. You must understand that Satan did not create anything. Everything you see that the system of the world is manifesting was a corruption of what God had. Evil men are able to sit down in a single position and meditate until they literally begin to levitate or some of them have out of body experiences. The church has lost the art of meditation. And this is the reason why the person of Jesus and the Father has not been real to us. This is the reason why our messages are not powerful. Because we are preaching about a man we only know about. We are not preaching about a man we know. You can know about me by studying my books. But you know me by meeting me. We've read several books about knowing God. About encountering him. These things can only tell you about God. They are supposed to create a desire in your spirit. To push you to another level. Your praise and your worship is such a vital key. To experiencing the glories of heaven. To entering the very throne room of God. Meditation. When you allow your soul to begin to reflect on the reality of what you are meditating upon. Meditation makes a thing become real. Meditation fuels desire. Meditation puts pressure upon your soul to make real what you are meditating upon. The reason why we sing songs and they do not carry power and effect is because they do not come from a depth of meditation. The Bible says in Revelations that we will sing the songs of Moses. Because Moses brought these songs from a depth of meditation. One of the things the church has lost is the ability to meditate. The ability to meditate upon the word of God. The ability to meditate upon the very words of our worship. And so we are not able to speak these words in spirit and in truth. And so these words do not make meaning in the realm of the spirit. They do not send an incense of true worship. And we find out that in spite of our hours of probably kneeling down and crying we do not really experience the tangibility and the effect of coming into God's presence I do not believe that any believer would come into God's presence and not be changed for the Bible says as we behold him we are changed we are transformed hallelujah meditation is a powerful key true worship and I want to show us three aspects of meditation that will help us I'll be very fast because of my time number one is what I call the principle of silence the principle of silence many people do not know how to bring their soul into a stillness in the presence of God Several times you read in scripture, the Bible says, be still my soul. I think one of the greatest examples of worshippers in scripture is David himself, the psalmist. And many times we see David writing about the stillness of his soul. He understood the principle of bringing his spirit and his soul to a point of stillness. A point where he is not distracted. Hallelujah. Let's look at a few scriptures. When you read Psalms 46 from verse 10 and 11, can we look at that very quickly? The principle of silence as a key to true worship. The principle of silence. The principle of silence. Many times we think when we worship is just about words. Words are a vital point of worship, but worship is not all about words. 
The principle of silence. Psalm 46. Thank you, precious Father. Hallelujah. Sorry, I said Psalm 46. Psalm 4, verse 4. Psalm 4, verse 4. Psalm 4, verse 4. I'll read it. It says, Stand in awe and see not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. It says, Stand in awe and see not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Listen. If you want your worship to be that of spirit and truth, you must understand the mystery of solitude and silence. Many times we see in the life of Jesus himself, he had the ability to steal his spirit. He had the ability to steal his soul. This is one of the aspects we need to understand and train our spirits to get to a point where when you are in God's presence, you are able to stand still. You are able to void yourself of all the distractions that the devil can bring. Because when your spirit and your soul is still, then you are focused in your worship. Then what you begin to say becomes spirit and life. And this is why many times when we begin to sing, Sometimes you find out that there is no desire for you to join and sing. The Spirit of God wants your spirit to be still. And sometimes you find out that the most comfortable position is just to close your eyes. You are standing still. It's a realm of worship. The Spirit of God is bringing you to a point of stillness. So that out of the depth of that stillness, when you open your mouth to speak, you will speak words that are spirit and life. You will speak words that will shift things and move things in the realm of the spirit. The principle of silence. Many times we are too distracted in our worship. Many times, even music that is such a vital tool for worship can be such a weapon of distraction. You must learn to be still in your spirit. Every time you see God speaking to the people, stand still. The psalmist said, be still. Be still. Be still. Every time he prophesied to himself and said, be still. We must understand the mystery of stillness. Where you are able to bring your spirit to a point of silence. Where there is no noise in your spirit. You are able to bring yourself to that point. Then the gifts of the spirit begin to flow. Then the operation of the anointing begins to flow. Then the spirit of God can gain entrance into your soul. And begin to use your imagination and your emotions and everything. To bring you to that place of worship. You must understand the principle of silence. The principle of stillness. Very important. Let's go to the next one. Employing the power of creative imagination in worship. This is very, very important. Many of us have been taught, probably from our homes or so on and so forth, that imagination is a demonic thing. Many of us have been taught that imagination is the realm of the devil where he constructs wrong things. That is so wrong. That is such an erroneous teaching. Your imagination is such a powerful weapon of communion in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, now unto him, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you think or imagine so God expects you to imagine 
creative imagination is such a powerful key into walking in the prophetic dimension of worship you must be able to allow the spirit of God construct pictorially in your imagination what you are saying so when you begin to sing when you begin to sing about the beauty of his holiness the spirit of God breathes upon your creative imaginative power and you begin to see you begin to see the Lord in his might you begin to see the power of his presence you begin to see him walk just like Isaiah and as you see him every falsehood is living in your heart and that song is rising from a depth of reality and truth because you are not just saying what um, the song leader is singing you are in a realm of your own you are not just in church you are in the very presence of God the spirit of God is beholding that is the first realm into entering visions and revelations you must not wait until you are transported in the spirit God gave every man the creative imaginative power to be able to help your mind comprehend the reality of what you are saying to be able to interact with the glories of heaven and so when you stand and begin to sing and say the angels cry I see with my imagination first of all I'm not talking of God opening your eyes I see with my imagination I begin to see the 24 elders laying down their golden crowns and I see them in worship and the Spirit of God begins to compel me to join the service I am seeing and then I find out that there is spirit and truth rising from my worship and God begins to prove to me that I am making it in spirit and truth by revealing his glory and opening me up into the reality of what I am seeing the power of creative imagination in worship this is one of the ways I study scripture I don't just study scripture as a history book I imagine Peter and John looking at the man I imagine the gate beautiful probably very gray and so on and so forth because of rust and erosion and other kinds of things all around the soil and I imagine the man sitting very dusty I'm using the power of my creative imagination to transport myself into the world so that I am able to interact with what the spirit is saying it's a powerful weapon that the church has lost tonight I'm bringing us back to honor the place of your creative imagination in worship this is one of the reasons why God compels you to close your eyes because many times when you close your eyes in worship then there is no distraction coming from your five senses and you are able to focus on the glories of heaven God is able to construct pictorially the reality of what you are singing and then as you sing he becomes to you what you are singing he reveals himself and manifests himself in this worship. Hallelujah. The power of creative thinking, seeing in the spirit. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 6, Eve saw the fruit and it caused her to desire it. Every time you see a thing, you are being forced. There is pressure in your spirit. To get to that realm every time you behold a thing the spirit of god mounts pressure upon your soul and it begins to push you into that point where you desire to have that experience in reality when you begin to sing about john getting um, caught up in the spirit it begins to mount pressure upon your spirit man and causes you to begin to incubate a desire to have that experience so every time I study the word and I see something that is powerful, I close my eyes and allow the spirit of God to begin to breathe upon my imagination. And as I see it, I begin to speak, Hagar. I begin to mutter those words of faith into my spirit. And I see my spirit transported into those realities. And in no distant time, I begin to walk in those realms in real life. This is a powerful principle. 
in Genesis chapter 13 verse 10, Lot saw the goodness of the land and it caused him to desire it. It put a pressure upon his spirit and he went in the direction of what he saw. In Joshua chapter 17 verse 21, Achan saw the Babylonian garments and although they were prohibited to touch it because he was able to see it brought a desire in his spirit. Hallelujah. In 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 2, King David, when the armies went for war, he saw Bathsheba and when he saw it, it began to put pressure upon his soul and he desired her. That The more he saw, the more he incubated that desire until he could not stop. He had to act it out. The power of creative imagination in your worship. Hallelujah. In Numbers chapter 13 from verse 28, down to 30 we read that when the 12 spies came back all of them brought reports of what they saw the 10 said this is what we saw we saw the anarchites they were so gigantic we are not able to take the land but two people said we are well able they saw and it put pressure in their spirit and god honored it hallelujah when you are able to see i'm not just talking many of us are waiting until you begin to get transported into the realm of the heavens but when you see it mounts a pressure in your spirit it mounts a pressure in your spirit and when you keep singing and as you're seeing you're mounting a pressure upon your spirit and it gets you to that point where you want to manifest the reality of these things you see hallelujah thank you holy spirit in Genesis chapter 11 from verse 6 the Bible talks about Nimrod and the host of his people the Bible said they decided to build a tower let's see it quickly Genesis Genesis chapter 11 from verse 6 let's hear the verdict of God concerning the situation Genesis chapter 11 You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. Yeah. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. Hallelujah. Genesis 11. From verse 6, it said, And the Lord said, Behold, the people are one and they have all one language and this they begin to do and nothing will be withheld from them which they have which they have which they have are you seeing it now even God knew that because of the power of Nimrod's creative imagination he had already seen he had seen that pillar hitting the very heavens and God himself said look I know what I've created in the man and I know that his, imagi his creative imagination is so powerful. Nimrod had so convinced himself using the power of his imagination. And God said, truly, nothing will stop them. If God could say that concerning a fallen man, how much more we who are seated in Christ, who our minds have been renewed by the word of God, the power of employing your constructive imagination in worship. The last point is the Hebrew word Hagar. Hagar means to mutter. Hagar means to speak forth. Hagar means to speak forth. Now, after you have meditated, after you have used your constructive imagination, look, let me tell you something. At that point, the devil can no longer get, that is the point of faith. At that point, your spirit has received it. At that point, it has entered your spirit. Nothing can take it out again. At that point, your present situation will not be able to alter the reality of the picture that has been implanted in your spirit. And at that point, you have believed with your heart. At that point, you have believed with your heart. And you are ready now to hagar, begin to mutter, begin to speak it from your spirit, not from your soul, not from your body, not from your brain. You begin to speak it. And the words begin to come out as spirit and life. The words begin to come out 
our spirit and life. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 15. It says, let us therefore offer unto God the calves of our lips. The calves of our lips. An acceptable worship that comes from a depth of meditation. When you meditate upon the word. When you allow the spirit of God to breathe upon you. The creative, imaginative power of the spirit breathes upon your mind. Then you begin to speak like a king that you are. Then you begin to make decrees. Job chapter 22 verse 28 says, Decree a thing and it shall be established. Let me tell you something. It's not just about speaking. If you speak what you do not believe, it's the same thing as not saying anything. Because you're not going to get any result. God is spirit. And until that reality is implanted in your spirit, you're not going to be able to speak words. As believers, we must speak words and see effect in the realm of the spirit. We must be able to speak words. I'm teaching us a dimension of worship. So from the depth of this revelation, you lift up your voice and begin to sing. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. And God knows you are not lying. You are not just trying to pretend. It's coming from a depth of worship. It's coming from a depth of worship. Is rising from the recreated spirit and it's been spoken as spirit and life and you'll be able to make effect in the realm of the spirit Yahweh hey. please rise up on your feet Yahweh hey. you are glorious so glorious in your way Yahweh, 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 You are glorious, so glorious in your way. Hallelujah. Before I drop down from this place, can you hold the hands of somebody? Instrumentalists, go ahead and begin to play. Clash the simba. Play, make mysteries in the spirit. Go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit. That the spirit of God will make this revelation a reality. Go ahead, don't be silent. Hold the hands of somebody. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, Speak this in the of the spirit. Go ahead and pray. 
Make a table go sobakata. Just one minute, just one minute. Make a table kata. Le bo sobakata. Le break a table go so break a table go. Empe ne moso. Le be shabaka. La bakata bakata go so break a day. Make a table go so break a day bossa. Makata la bako robo do so break a day. Break a table bossa. Makata baba. Make a rebossa. Empe te moso makata. La baska rabada shike. Make a break a day bossa break a day day day. Shakataba kate de de boko soba. Break a day 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 boko shakata makata. Lendene koso kata, lava kasi kete mo koso baka, rapa kato na mo koso bege de baka, enke te makaba baba, rakata de de mo suba ka. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Please, when you go back home, meditate on these things. Paul told Timothy in First Timothy chapter four, verse fifteen. He said, meditate on these things, give yourself wholly to them. That your profiting will appear unto all. The mystery of silence, the mystery of solitude, empowering the creative imagination of the spirit within you, and the ability to mutter, to speak like a king that you are. Father, we thank you for your word. Lift your hands and thank him. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. Father, I pray for everyone who is sick in this place. I command that you be healed in the name of Jesus from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I command absolute healing in the name of Jesus. I decree that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. I send the word of healing to your body. In the name of Jesus, as many who are desiring several kinds of miracles, I release these miracles to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, no matter how impossible they seem to be, when you know the God who is going to produce them, you will know they are possible. I decree that it is possible for you. In the name of Jesus.